Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. You're all my brothers and sisters, but uh, last night I received a word from the Lord after prayer, and uh, I wrote a lot of things down in my notebook. Um, I'll just take you through it step by step, but I was given a scripture. I was told the thief on the cross. So I looked up the scripture and it's Luke 23, 39 through 43. It says, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, now there was three of them hanging there. There was Jesus and uh, there was two thieves and one was on either side of them. It said, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, are you not the Christ? There goes that train horn. I can hear it in the distance. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that the greatest, greatest example of love right there? Even as he was dying on the cross, even as this was happening. And I am to tell you that he is coming soon. Beloved, he is coming soon. I had another dream a couple weeks ago. I made a video. It's, he's, I heard uh, his voice. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Get your house in order. Get prayed up. Get packed up. And I have a confirmation that not everybody is going. Now, I made a video about this, and I erased it. <clears throat> I let the devil attack me, and I erased it because as soon as I posted that, I lost a lot of subscribers. And that to me right there says that those people that are listen, you know, listening to the, the preachers or, or, you know, wh whoever they're listening to, they're telling them all of us are going to go. And then the wicked are going to be le left and be destroyed. And that's not true. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There are going to be people that are on the rail. They're not hot. They're not cold. They're lukewarm, and God says he's going to spit them out. He is going to spit them out. They're not going to go. So don't be lukewarm. Make up your mind right now because I'm telling you, we. I had a dream, and it said 40 days to rule. I'll give you permission. 40 days to rule. That was the body of Christ. This was on Monday. After 40 days, something big is going to happen, friends. That's going to be the start of something. Now, I, no man knows the day or the hour, but I'm telling you. And then I seen a vision of the two witnesses. So let's get ready. Let your mind be made up. If he tells you to do something right now, do it. Even if it, you think it's like, you know, if it lines up with his word, if it lines up with his will, do it. Okay, so I'm just going to look in my book right here. Um... This is what I heard. Now it's really, okay, so now there's something I didn't research here. I didn't notice that. But I, at the very first, I wrote down verse 6 through 7. I have to research that. I don't know what that means. Um, see, I'm jumping the gun. Okay. But underneath of it, this is what the Lord said to me. Some of you will be divided. My grace is sufficient for thee. Clothe yourself in my grace and preach this message. Actually, it says this message preached that those and then my pen faded. Now, when my pen fades, that means no more writing because this pen will work when the Lord wants us to work and then it'll stop. So, I mean, just take it as what that is. But we're supposed to be preaching about God's grace his mercy and his love and that he died on the cross you know once you give your life to him and and you you say you confess 
that he came for you. Don't think of everybody else. He came for you. It says that he knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew what you were going to look like. He knew what you were going to go through in your life. He knew how many hairs were going to be on your head. He knew you. He made you and he named you. Just like he knows all the amounts of stars in the in outer space, he, he named every one of them. Just like he knows every single fish in the bottom of the ocean, he named every one of them. He knows you are his creation. He knows every thought that you ever thought, every thought you ever think. He knows everything bad you ever did. He knows everything good you ever did. Just give your life to him and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because the, the language of the Lord is love. He loves you. He knew what, was, what you were going to do in your life. He knew. And you know what? We're, and I wrote this down too. I'll get to it, okay? So then I, in my dream, after I heard this, it kept going and I was shown that I made this video. And as this video, after it was posted, I had comments on it and I was looking through to read a comment and one of them said, and it was from a woman, and... Uh, Okay, so it, it's the beginning of the comment was shown, I was shown the comment under the video and then it said, don't you people realize? And then, oh, okay. And then I, and then I continued on because I ran out. It said, a leopard can never change its spots with a pretty pink tutu. This is the, the second, the first I seen a vision of a, a dream of a leopard and he was trying on a pretty pink tutu and with these little pink ballet slippers on and stuff, right? And um, I, I, I actually had this amazing dream and the Lord finished interpreting it for me last night with the help of this other um, sister that I had just met. But um, the Lord is so good. And the dream wasn't even what I thought it meant. It was just, it was complete love and grace and mercy, you know. So, uh, I was shown the comment under this video. And it said, don't you people realize a leopard can never change its spots with a pretty pink tutu? So, to me, this is saying you can do whatever you want to try to make yourself righteous to try to get to heaven, to try to be in his presence, to try to, you know, you could do whatever you want. You can try to, you know, mask yourself. Oh, I'm not this, I'm not that. You know, these, these churches are teaching, you know, oh, you're so righteous and all this stuff. And these, these men and these women are walking around with their nose up in the air, you know, oh, I'm so righteous. And they, they pass a bomb on the street and they won't even say hi. They won't tell him about the love of Jesus. They won't tell him that they're, he's under, if he accepts Jesus in their life, he's under their, his grace and mercy. They, they just walk on by with their nose in the air. A leper can never change its spots. We are sinners. We will be sinners. But the Lord died on the cross so that we can enter into his kingdom. It doesn't, you know, how can we enter into the kingdom? Believe on him that sent me and believe that I died on the cross for you, right? Those that have seen my, those that have seen the father have seen me. Those that have seen me have seen the father. Jesus is the Lord. Come into the flesh, gave his life, a sacrifice, a lamb, died on the cross. Okay? We need to start believing that we're saved because when he comes back, he's going to be looking for people that are filled with faith, that are seeking him, that are, I don't, that are continuing on to, through repentance and, and don't, they don't love evil. They don't like it. They're trying to, you know, do everything they can just to, to be to be good, but they don't think they are good. Do you see what I'm saying? They know that through Jesus, they, they don't, they humble themselves. They don't think like, oh, I'm, they don't make themselves righteous. They know everything's through Jesus and they're just still a sinner. That the Lord has washed away their sins in Jesus' eyes. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, so then uh, I was led to write, believe on him who that was sent to die on the cross. Believe his mercy and grace in your life. Believe he's coming for people that have found him, have found his faith, have received his mercy. If you have made God your ex, if you've backslidden, 
Rededicate your life. Just accept him. Accept him. Accept that you're nothing without him. Don't try to go out and do it on your own. You can't. You need him. Uh, if you would just believe, very soon the rapture will take place. The ones that are left, scattered, believe. Believe on the one who sent him. Okay, this is inspired. The Lord wrote through me. Accept Jesus. Accept that Jesus died for you. And know that he will protect you. And then I said, then it says the thief on the cross. Okay. So then um, he, he, he said he was sorry. He, he stood up for Jesus from the other, the other man. You know, he, he, uh, he recognized that he was a sinner. And then he asked God to forgive him. Right? Because that's his grace and his mercy in our life. A leopard can't change his spots, but when Jesus comes back, if you believe on him, believe on the one that sent him, and you're, you're just praying to him in your prayer closet, and you're just trying to be good, and you know you accept that he died on the cross for you, and that you have faith that you're going to be saved, he's going to come for you, friends. And the devil tries to get in there and lie, like, you'll, oh, he tries to bring up your past, right? Should I say, oh, you're a liar, you're a thief, you're an adulteress, you're this, you're that, you're the other thing, nobody loves you, you're the black sheep of the family, everybody hates you, you have mental problems, you're dependent on this and that and the other thing, you're just a bum on the street, this and that and the other thing. Get out of here. Get behind me, Satan, because I'm in his grace. I'm in his mercy. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I have a new hope. All I've been reborn again. All things are washed away. Right? Okay. So then the next part of my dream, I went back to sleep and I had this. So I had a dream that me and my family were in this like hotel room or this lobby of this hotel and we got onto this elevator and we went up to the third floor and we were waiting and we went up. Okay, so then we came out of the elevator while we were on the rooftop. It led us to the rooftop. And uh, all of a sudden um, I seen this uh, lion. He was like a mini lion, like a mountain lion. That's what he was. He was like a mountain lion. And um, he started running and he was like, follow me. I just perceived he wanted me to follow him, that he wasn't gonna hurt me. So I told my family, hold on, I got to go, I got to go do something. I got to follow this lion, right? And so I followed him across the rooftop and there it was these, um, I, to the ledge and, and the lion had went down this iron ladder all the way down, back down to the ground. And I said, oh man, I was worried about the lion. I was like, oh, I hope he didn't break his neck on the way down or something, you know? And, uh, and then, uh. Here comes the distractions. Okay. So then I get down and I turn my body around on this metal ladder. And um, I slowly climb down and I'm looking for the lion. And uh, he led me back to the... I appeared somewhere else. It was like um, a convalescent hospital, I believe. Or it was like a home nursing center or something. And um, next thing you know, I'm, I'm laying in this bed. And I just felt kind of like it was this sickly, dirty bed. And uh, I'm laying there. And all of a sudden, this lady was there. And I laid down next to this lady. And she was an elderly lady. And she was in a lot of pain. And she had, like, lacerations or growths on her body. And I was laying there just nurturing her next to her because she was all alone. And I was putting like salve, some, some kind of salve and just gently blotting her uh, growths on her body. And then she was cold. She started shivering. And I, I realized that I had a cover. I had a cover over me and I was really warm. And so I took this cover next to her and I put it over her and I pulled it up to her shoulders and she goes, oh, thank you. I was so cold. And then after that, I, I was down. Um, I was going. Oh, I, I appeared in the elevator with some other people. There were some other people that were with me. It might have been my family. I'm not sure. But 
this man, old man came walking and he had a cane and he entered the elevator and he was like, I'm looking for my wife. Or he didn't even say it. I just knew he was looking for his wife. And um, I said, I know exactly where your wife is. So I just pressed the button and I took him up to the floor, you know, where his, the wife was laying in bed that I just took in, taken care of. And um, uh, I was leading him to his wife. But, you know, the funny thing is, is that... Um, it was the president's wife. I perceived that it was the president's wife. It was, she was an elderly, elderly woman and she was very sick. She was suffering. And, um, anyway, I'm not going to interpret. I, I know in my heart of hearts what that means, what the stream means. I don't need an interpretation. The Lord already interpreted it, but, um, I just wanted to share with you guys about what the Lord spoke to me of his love and grace and mercy and um, the faith and repentance and uh, you know we're all we're all sinners don't be self-righteous seek God seek his kingdom and his righteousness all right um, Lord Jesus, I bow my head right now and I pray for the body of Christ. Lord, I know that our time is short. I pray for Israel, Lord God. I pray for, um, oh, Lord, I just pray that you would prepare us, God, that you would strengthen us, Lord Jesus, that you would get us ready, Lord, that you would send angels ministering to people, uh, and that you would just clothe us in your love and your grace and mercy, Lord God. And all the people that aren't ready yet, Lord, that you would get them ready, Lord Jesus. All right. I pray all this in your mighty name, in Jesus' name. Amen.